Today we're going north of the border, and yes, even north of me here in Wisconsin, we're going to Canada, specifically what it is that Found North has going on with their newest releases, batch five and six. Let's do this. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Like I had mentioned before, again, we're going north of the border. What it is that Nick and Zach Taylor of Found North Whiskey Company has going on, in my opinion, it may be the best of what it is that the Canadian whiskeys are offering in today's market and designed especially for the American whiskey drinker. Again, I've had Nick on a couple of times and we've talked a lot about the passion behind what it is that him and his brother have going on. And it is clearly translated over into the blends that they've got going on. So let's dive into these today. Again, we're going to take a look at both batch five and six, but specifically we're going to start off with batch five. What does batch five have to offer? So batch five is coming in at 116.2 proof or 58.1% ABV. It's a mash bill of 73% 21-year corn whiskey and 27% eight-year weeded whiskey. It is aged eight years. MSRP is coming in at right around that $125 price point. So let's go ahead and dive into this. This is an interesting blend that they've got. This is their first introduction to I'll say a weeded uh, whiskey. And again, we're talking about great ages. Again, a 21 year old corn whiskey and an eight year old wheat whiskey. If you're unfamiliar with how the profile of a Canadian whiskey is blended, they all start out with 100% grain and then blend those 100% into percentages. This again, just happened to come in at 73% of the 21 year old corn whiskey. And again, 27% uh, of the eight year old weeded whiskey. So really excited to get into today's review and really showcase what it is that incredibly blended Canadian whiskeys can really uh, show everyone. Color wise, as you can see, I mean, a really, really nice kind of medium copper type of color on that. Moving the whiskey again, this is all non-chill filtered, no additives, no color, none of that stuff added. So this is just pure, pure Canadian whiskey right here. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the nose. So my first thought immediately is this honey graham cracker note. Really nice kind of sweet, like sugar cookie note, almost like a shortbread, something along those lines. It smells very like rich and decadent. Nice kind of sweet oak on that. Beautiful baking spices, like it's baking spices galore. I mean, it is really, really prevalent on the baking spice side of things. Almost like a candied corn uh, also. Again, it's a, it's a high aged, higher percentage uh, corn whiskey that's in there. So you are gonna pick up on some of that, but the sweetness that's there on this is really coming across as more of like a candy corn. Now it's kind of starting to switch a little bit, I'll say. This is starting to get into that like apple crisp. So the combination of like that, that custardy or shortbread sh uh, sugar cookie uh, is really starting to kind of come forward a little bit here. More of that kind of apple that are there in combo of caramels, again, the vanilla, really beautiful nose so far. Love the baking spice on this as well. It's almost coming across as like a Snickers bar. So you've got the kind of a little bit of that, maybe chocolate, caramel, Instead of the like peanut, I would say it's more of like a, a softer, like nutty profile, like maybe more of like a, an almond, cashew, something that's not as, as like pungent of a, a nutty profile on that. Boy, it's almost like the sweetness of that, like just that it just continues to open up into the, the sweetness, but with that lingering baking spice, kind of apple crisp, but I'm getting a little bit of like a, a funnel cake maybe like with some honey drizzled on that, something along those lines. Maybe get a little bit of a, of a maybe brown butter or a burnt sugar. An awful lot going on spice-wise with something that doesn't have any rye in it at all. This is straight corn and wheat whiskey, 
blended to create this, but beautiful, beautiful nose so far. So I'm sure you've heard and seen all the buzz around this brand, Z-Biotics. The question is, what is it and what is it going to do for you? Today, we're going to take a look at that right now. So Z-Biotics is the first of its kind. This is a probiotic drink that breaks down the byproduct of alcohol that just gives you that after morning sluggish feeling after maybe enjoying a few too many cocktails. So how does it work? Simply prior to enjoying your favorite alcoholic beverage or heading out on the town for the evening, simply open up one of the bottles within the box and enjoy it. That's it. You're on your way to then feeling much better, much more productive the following morning without having that after morning sluggish feeling. For me, I like to use these right before doing a barrel pick. When you're going through Rick houses and you're enjoying or consuming samples, this will assure that the morning after you don't have that after morning sluggish feel. So I have to say a big thank you to Zbiotics for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you check out the link in the description below. Use code MyBourbonJourney. Enjoy 15% off your order. Again, use code MyBourbonJourney. And a big thank you goes out to Zbiotics again for sponsoring today's video. Why don't we go ahead and see how this bad boy is going to taste? Cheers. My first impression immediately is how oily this is on the palate. Very velvety, very oily. It's really setting up how this whiskey should start to kind of develop on you. Like I got on the nose, there's very much of that apple crisp in combo with like a vanilla custard. Again, maybe a little bit of like a shortbread or sugar cookie, something along those lines. But lingering always is this beautiful baking spice in combo of that, again, that apple crisp. But the baking spice on this is just incredible. It's something for a corn and wheat that you wouldn't expect that much spice to be on this, but it's there in combination with that really nice kind of decadent sweetness that it's there so far. Honey graham cracker notes on this one for sure. Nice kind of like toasted almond. It's very creamy, very velvety, staying tried and true baking spices. Yeah, again, that sugar cookie, shortbread, maybe even a little bit of like a, a cocoa powder note, not overly intense, but it's it's definitely, there's a little bit of a, a chocolate. I, I think what it is is more of like a, a malt ball. So you've got that chocolate and then whatever that little malted cookie that is that that's there. This is a lot of what that is right now. Beautiful, beautiful whiskey so far. Yeah, even like this sweet, like rich oak, maybe even a little bit of like a, a green tea that's got some, some sweetness to it. So there's a little bit of that maybe herbal character, but with, with the sweetness that's there. So it's not overly pungent, but it's still got that backbone of the, of the sweetness. Again, very velvety, very creamy. That's remained consistent all the way through. What I will say about this one is the balance of the corn and wheat have been done perfectly. It's not something that you see often, um, especially when you're blending high aged corn whiskey with a really nice wheated whiskey. How they've put this together, you know, Nick and Zach have really hit a home run with this. So if this sounds like something that you would enjoy based on my description, it's all of that. It is an absolutely fantastic, incredible whiskey. I would encourage anybody who appreciates something with some sweetness, a little bit of um, richness that's there. It's got everything truly going on. So with that being said, why don't we move over to batch six and see what that has to offer. So here we are with batch six. Let's, uh, let's dive into this and see what we've got with this. So as you can see, color wise, again, somewhat similar to batch five in terms of color. Again, that beautiful kind of rich copper note. Move the whiskey around the glass a little bit. You're still getting some beautiful oils on the glass. So, so what exactly is batch six? So batch six is coming in at 128.2 proof or 64.1% ABV. This is a blend of five whiskeys aged between 17 and 26 years old, non-chill filter. So this is aged in new Hungarian and American oak 
as well as a Rechard X bourbon barrel uh, aged and distilled in Canada. Again, like I mentioned, these are ages between 17 and 26 year old uh, whiskeys and the MSRP is gonna come in at right around that $150 price point. So let's go ahead and dive into the nose. Ooh, a beautiful like butterscotch note right off the bat. Again, very tried and true, very consistently with the baking spice from batch five to now batch six, beautiful baking spices on this. Sweet, rich oak. You're getting a little bit again of that Rick House effect. This is this coming off of five is much richer, a darker profile. So this is probably heavier on the more traditional, like what we would interpret this as a, a older bourbon. This is kind of some of the notes you're gonna get coming off of uh, batch five. Again, those really rich brown sugars, maybe like a, a brown butter. It's very rich, decadent. As I'm nosing this, it does give you that impression of nosing a really well-aged bourbon. So the blend that, they're, that they've put together for the American whiskey palette is kind of hitting all of those senses right now. A honey graham cracker, chocolate notes, definitely heavier fruit notes. So you're getting a little bit more of those kind of cherry notes, things along those lines. Definitely this would fall right into that category of a, a bourbon drinkers Canadian whiskey. So let's check this one out and see what batch six has to offer. Cheers. Wow. For me immediately, it's maybe one of the most velvety textured whiskeys I've ever had. That mouthfeel on this is so syrupy, rich, viscous, great proof point on this. Again, coming in at just under 129 proof. It's not drinking like that at all, but that mouthfeel and texture of this whiskey, absolutely incredible right away. I'm going to say this like right away with this again, that baked apple pie, apple crisp is very consistent with both of these, but this in batch six is just amplified that much more because it's in combination of the sweetness, those baking spices, the rich sweet oak, that velvety kind of rich texture that it has to it. Absolutely incredible so far. Again, those brown sugars, maybe, you know, brown butter, maybe even maple kind of notes. But man, I'm really having a hard time just getting off the fact that this is so creamy, mouthfeel is fantastic. The texture of this whiskey is, is absolutely incredible. It's just lingering on the palate, allowing all those baking spices, that apple crisp or apple pie. Man, it's just incredible so far. It's, it's almost to the point where it gets difficult to describe because you're so in the moment with this whiskey. Again, even a little bit of like a, a sweet tea. I'm not going to say that this is a a green or black tea, this is probably falling more in the lines of like a, a, an actual sweet tea. So you're still getting a little bit of that, that tea profile, but just with the added sweetness. But again, lingering throughout the process is those baking spices. Again, that baked apple pie, maybe even some pastry notes. It is all over the place in terms of how this whiskey is really setting up. I'm going to say for me, this is maybe the best Canadian whiskey blend I've ever had. It is that good and it is 100% worth seeking out. If you don't have to buy a couple of other bottles and you can save up to spend $150 on a whiskey, this is definitely one of those whiskeys that is worthy of not one, but I'll say even two. It is that good of a whiskey. What it is that Nick and Zach have done to create this blend, I, I don't even have any words for it. It is just that good of a whiskey. Now, going back to it, I think you're starting to get, as it sits on my palate, a little bit more of that kind of toasted almond, maybe even like a, a honey-coated like cashew, something along those lines. 
again, that richness and texture is really allowing for all of these flavors to develop because it just lingers and sits on the palate for it feels like forever. You are still getting a little bit of that barrel char note that's there. Um, slate Rick House effect on it all, I'll say. But again, that sweet, rich oak that's there. I mean, they have aged this again in ex bourbon barrels, so you should start to get a little bit of that profile on it. As the finish develops, I'll say the longer I've kind of talked, one other thing that kind of comes out in this for me is a bit of like a like a cinnamon roll. There's that baking spice kind of combined with maybe some of the pastry, the, the doughiness, the creamy characteristic that it's got going on. It's just one of those whiskeys that's all over the place. Just absolutely, absolutely crazy. It just, again, it's a high corn. And I think I forgot to mention before, but the blend of this was 87% corn, 12% rye, and only 1% malted barley. So again, very high corn. But again, the different whiskeys that they've got blending, the ages, all of that is factoring in that Hungarian oak. There's just a lot going on with this that you can't just narrow this down to like a single mash bill and then that's what you've got. Canadian whiskey, when they're blending these, can be all over the place. And what it is that Nick and Zach have done, incredible. There's not much more I can say about that. They have designed these whiskeys to appeal to the American drinker palette. And it is 100% done that. For what it is that this batch five and six have going on, they've kind of nailed these two. They just keep pushing the envelope. And as much as you think that they can't continuously get better, they just keep getting better. And for me, it is one of those brands that I hope more people appreciate and maybe kind of find because what it is that they've got going on, I think that these are whiskeys that are going to appeal to a lot of the American drinker palate uh, in a very, very good way. Guys, there you go. I hope that that helps you a little bit if you were kind of on the fence or didn't know much about what it is that Found North had to offer. These two blends are a fine representation of what it is that the tailors are doing with this brand. I would encourage you if you can find either batch five and or six, I mean, my opinion would be as a, as a whiskey enthusiast would be to find these whiskeys. If you can buy a couple of them, I know the price point is a little bit higher, but if you can, you can maybe thank me later. They are, they are that good. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it got a little bit long, uh, but I'm really excited to be able to showcase two incredible whiskeys uh, for you guys today. So uh, if you'd like to follow me, you can on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of those places at My Bourbon Journey. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel and become part of the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club, of which we did a single barrel pick uh, from Found North, uh, you can check out the link in the description below. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, it's about the journey and not the destination. Cheers. Cheers.